Hey, how's it going everyone? Nathan here with a quick video guide on how to learn matchups in Pokemon. Anyone who's followed this channel for long will know that one of my biggest tips that I always give when you're looking to improve at the game, especially when we're talking about things like spotting win conditions, is breaking everything down to matchups. For example, being able to look at a team like this and a team like this and spot that, oh, okay, this dude's team doesn't have anything to stop Dragonite once the Magearna dies. That Dragonite is a good matchup. Doing that sort of process consistently throughout the game and using those matchups to identify problem and strong matchups, it's quite simply the key of learning win conditions in Pokemon. And again, I've already explained this several times. The concept of breaking down the game to just matchups is something that viewers of this channel will know pretty well. But I came to the realization recently when watching one of my old videos that while it's well and good for an experienced player like me to just be like, learn your matchups. That's probably not that helpful for a lot of newer players who don't know how to do so. Like if I was teaching someone how to box and they were asking me, hey coach, how do I deal with this opponent's uppercut? And I said, oh, that's easy, you just block it. I'd probably be a pretty lousy trainer. And really, while there's lots of intermediate players who've seen my videos and probably know exactly what I mean when I say to take your matchup seriously and probably know the methods to go about learning that easily, there's also probably a lot of people who've watched my videos and gone, uh, okay. So today I plan to amend that error and show my process of learning matchups in Pokemon. Speaking for myself, I've been learning a ton of new metagames on my stream lately, like the Little Cup tier and Ubers and Rarely Used and even Monotype. Just all kinds of cool tiers that Pokemon Showdown provides. And just like a brand new player might come to the overused tier and need to learn how to Blissey might match up against the Latios, I've gone into lots of these tiers and had to learn the ins and outs of the most common matchups too. Okay, well... Zygarde as a lead is faster than, no, we're slower than that. So not good versus Palkia, good versus Reshiram, bad versus Weevil, good versus Dialga, bad versus that tie. So I don't love that one. Thank you, Vettel's my play. The one matchup we didn't want, son of a gun. So trust me when I say that I've got some experience when it comes to this process. The first tool I need to introduce when it comes to learning these matchups is going to be Showdown's Battle Calculator. I'll throw a link right up here if you need it, uh, but you can also find it by typing slash calc into any Showdown chat. But for now, I'm just gonna give a brief breakdown of how it works. When you first come into the Showdown Calculator, you're gonna see this, and it's gonna seem like overwhelming and a lot of things that are coming at you all at once, but it really just breaks down to your Pokemon versus your opponent's Pokemon. So for example, if I wanna know what are the odds of being able to one hit KO or like what kind of damage I can deal when I have a Latios versus a Blissey, let's look it up here. So I'm gonna type in Latios and it's important to note that all of these are organized by generation. So while realistically for the most part, the data that you input will be the same, um, the sets that are involved are different, for example, because the Latios is in black and white overuse back in generation five, usually run different items and maybe even different IVs and IV EVs and things like that than the current generation Sword and Shield Latios is wood in most competitive play. So for example, I can go to black and white here and I can go to Latios and we'll do the choice spec set, which is the most common. And this doesn't show it, but a good example of this would be uh, Hidden Power Fire, which um, oftentimes is run in black and white so you can deal with Ferrothorn. But of course, if we're talking about Sword and Shield, the modern meta game, that's no longer available. So if you're looking at Latios once again, uh, you're running Mystical Fire instead, which wasn't available back then. So. Uh, depending on what tier you're playing, make sure you uh, type that in the top here. And then, so yeah, we go against the Blissey here. So I'm just gonna type in Blissey. And um, there's lots of different sets here. So for example, if you're playing the 1v1 metagame, oh, you guys can't see that, hold on. Uh, if you're playing the 1v1 metagame, uh, Blissey's, for example, run weird sets like, oh, they'll have 240 special attack. That's really weird, no one would do that. But I'm probably getting lost in the sauce here because 1v1 is, is not a good metagame to be basing your information off of. Uh, but for this sake, we'll just do OU Defensive, which is the most common set available. For the most part, if you can, this might, again, it might seem overwhelming if you're just starting, but if you just look at the basic set, like Blissey, there we go. Or, you know, Obama Snow. Obama Snow just shows the basic showdown usage ones. Okay, so you probably can't go wrong by choosing one of these if you want a basic calc and you're a beginner starting out. Or what if I want a really offbeat one like Absol. Absol, who's in the PU tier. Again, it just shows you these basic usage stats right now. Uh, so yeah, we can do that and we can know, okay, so if, if I'm in a matchup and I'm in a Latios versus an Absol, well, sure, the Latios can't swap in on a Draco Meteor because it says right here that's going to do 176 damage uh, to 200%, so it's almost uh, doing double the damage it needs. However, if Absol uses a priority Sucker Punch, it'll actually be able to take out the, uh, the Latios first, whereas, Super, uh, whereas Life Orb. And then you might ask, okay, well, that's fine if it's a Life Orb uh, Absol, but what if, you know, this is my Absol on my team and I'm going a little bit off the books and I gave it a Choice Scarf. I'm doing something a little bit weird. Can I still one hit KO that Latios? 
oh, okay, so when I click on this to highlight it, it says that there's a 50% chance that it'll OCO, so it gets a little bit more dicey. So again, maybe if I'm doing some team building and I wanna see what's the merit of a scarfed Absol, I can go, well, I lose that valuable one hit KO, uh, guaranteed at least on Latios, that's important. Or, you know, maybe you do, maybe, I don't think it does, but maybe uh, uh, you're up against a uh, Buzzsoul. And yeah, I don't think it learns uh, Psychic Fangs. But let's just, I can't look it up right now, but let's just say for curiosity's sake, how can I do against a Buzzsoul in that situation? No, it's not doing enough. What if I, if I type in that Life Orb again? Okay, great. Uh, I know it's a three hit KO. There we go. So like, that's the basics of how it works. And all this other stuff, which just seems super overwhelming and super scary, is once you break it down, it's not that bad. So for example, I can see, you know, uh, it's a three hit KO, 89% chance of a three hit KO. But what if I have Stealth Rocks up first? So that means that Buzzwool is taking 12% on every swap in. So I click that and now it introduces the Stealth Rock into these calculations. And it'll be just a guaranteed three hit KO instead of a percentage chance. But if it was maybe a little bit more, maybe it'd be in the two KO range for that. Um, if I have uh, a Reggie Alecki up, Troy Specs, do do do, and Rising Voltage. Uh, I can put electric terrain in here, which influences the damage that rising voltage does, or I can do grassy terrain if I want to know how much um, a Landorus Therian's earthquake is going to do because its damage is halved in grassy terrain, the earthquake. So normally it does 200%, but in grassy terrain, it does barely Oko's the Reggie Lucky, things like that. So maybe I'm, I'm getting a little bit too into it if I'm trying to make this seem approachable, but really this is a huge resource that you should be using when you're trying to learn these matchups because again, when I go into it and I go, Okay, I've never run into uh, an Abominus Snow before, and I've got my Lander Asterian in. It's an Ice type, Lander Asterian is four times weak to Ice. I need to make sure that I can beat it. Should it be swapping out right now? Well, by looking at this matchup, I see that no matter what, my Lander Asterian is going to uh, absorb one Ice Shard. In fact, I should be putting in minus one because Lander says Intimidate. And okay, I can handle Ice Shard just fine. That's great. But can Lander Oko it with a Stone Edge? Oh no, I can't. Dang it. What if it's Adamant instead of Jolly? Okay, if that's the case, maybe I can Oko it. Oh, but what if Stealth Rocks are up? Great, because it takes 25% uh, from Stealth Rocks. In that case, it's a guaranteed one hit KO. Things like this. That's how you use the calculator. If you watch any of my lives, I'm I use them a lot. Um, I've said in uh, before that you shouldn't be too reliant, where you do every single uh, decision is based on the calc, because then you're just kind of like uh, an in between between the computer and your play. But um, I do think it's important that you use this. It's fair to say that one of the biggest things that separates a top player in Pokemon from a total noob is just matchup knowledge. Being able to look at an opponent's team and go, okay, uh, that Hippowdon is definitely the Stealth Rocker, which makes it unlikely that the Lander Asterian is a defensive pivot set with Stealth Rocks, because you don't need two Stealth Rocks on one team. So that means that there's a good chance that it's a choice Scarf Landorus, which means that this Kartana, if the Landorus is Scarf, the Kartana is probably not Scarf. It's kind of like a puzzle at this point. Who, who fits what role? So I can beat that Kartana if it's not Scarf with my Tornadus because Tornado says this much and I'll go into the calc and I'll check this out and I'll realize, oh yeah, Hurricane will knock out the Kartana as long as it's not Scarfed, as long as it can't beat me to the punch. So I want to blame a newcomer for looking at that exact same thought process of unknowable lore and think like this is creating a massive difficulty curve in Pokemon that there's no way people can learn. And maybe you think that you need years and years of experience to reach this point, but really it just boils down to spending a bit of time in the calc and opening yourself up to this new information. It also means you're gonna be making some dumb mistakes along the way. You need to be forgiving with yourself for making them. Top players like Finchinator and ABR have made dumb mistakes and learned from them more often than you or I have even made choices to begin with in Pokemon, period. The mistakes that they've accumulated throughout the years are what turned them into great players and how they choose to learn from them is what separates them from you and me. But enough gabbing from me, I realized that I promised a concrete answer on learning matchups and I really haven't delivered so far because the concept is so nebulous. If there are 41 Pokemon in overuse, which there are currently, that means that there are 861 matchups in that tier alone. So I can't possibly just explain them all to you and break down a single tip that you can use for learning every single matchup. It's a little bit more learned through osmosis and through careful play and you adjust to it over time. Although quick tangent, um, if you also follow my advice, and I've given this before, you should try to stick to one consistent team where you're using one team over and over and you're learning those matchups backward and forward. Because if you do so, that's like 600 less matchups you have to remember in overuse, for example. But I hate leaving my answer so vague and essentially going to, oh, just learn it. It's easy as long as you calc everything because that's 
really not giving you much more tools than there was at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna finish this video with a very open and straightforward, and I'm gonna be like, my process is gonna be extremely clear, uh, example of me learning some Pokemon matchups for the first time. Like I said, I've had to be in the position of learning new matchups in Pokemon quite a bit recently. So I've gotten the uh, beginner approach kind of down pat at this point. So to recreate what I do when I learn a new tier or even just a basic learning a new matchup, whether it's VGC or national decks or anything goes, or uh, sword and shield overuse, whatever. Uh, it's just gonna be the following. Okay, so here I am. I've just started a ZU game with myself, uh, just using my alt here. Uh, and the important thing to note is I have never played a game of ZU in my life. I've never even used the ma vast majority of these Pokemon in competitive play at all. Like, if you had to ask me what um, Hitmonchan does in competitive Pokemon, I'd be like, man, I don't know. I think it's got high spadef, like I don't, maybe more than a total beginner would know, but point is, I really don't know a lot. So I'm going into a game like this, I need to learn this matchup for the first time. You'll be able to choose because uh, I'm gonna choose the most informed lead matchup I can right now. And this, I'm gonna have to learn these matchups firsthand. So let's get through it right now. Um, the first thing you need to note is again, I have no freaking clue what Hitmonchan does. So I'm actually gonna go to my second resource here which is a Smogon Strategy Pokedex. Uh, again, I'll throw a link right here if you don't know what it is. It's an enormously amazing tool, same as the calculator. And I'm gonna search Hitmonchan. Now, I see it and they often have um, descriptions attached to these things. So even though it's not in the modern generation, you can actually, oh, my thing's a little bit zoomed out here, hold on. Hold on, there we go. Uh, so I can look at a previous generation, which wouldn't be completely applicable to, you know, the current metagame in PU. But I can go to this and I can find a whole description here where it says it's a solid Pokemon PU. It takes roll compression. It's an offensive spinner. Okay, so it rapid spins hazards away. That's that's really useful. Um, it can drain punch. It can heal with those. It's a revenge killer. Thanks to mock punch. Okay, I get it. I'm looking at the stats here and you gotta remember this is PU. So 105 attack and 76 speed. Sounds pretty solid for me. 110 spadef. Yeah, that sounds pretty great. Um, okay, this is all useful and you can run, you know, offensive sets with this and the Iron Fist ability. What does Iron Fist do? Uh, it's punch attacks have their power multiplied by 1.2. So, man, that means that it's Mock Punch or it's Drain Punch. It's got a boost from Life Orb and from Iron Fist. Okay, that's really useful. So, again, that's that process of learning it. And I'm also going to be using this calc too, like I mentioned before. So, I can go, okay, I think my Executor is fine against this uh, Hitmonchan. So, let's see. I'll go, not Marowak, Executor Alola is what it's called. Uh never spell this one right uh versus this hit my chan so let's assume it's the offensive set i'll just play it a little bit safe here and okay looks like we're fine here and looks like i can oko it right away back with a drink of meteor so it should be a safe matchup to lead off with now i'm curious uh i know it can run elemental punches so what if this hit my chan can do ice punch so i should check that calc and let's see we'll scroll down here ice punch and ice punch can oko uh, our executor alola and we see here 250 speed uh, 113 speed on my executor, so it's faster too. So it could just beat me straight off the rip with an ice punch if it's got that. That's worth noting. And now, again, if you're a new player and you go, well, you know that it's got ice punch. I didn't know that. That's how am I supposed to know that same process? Again, if you learn that first hand, there's a good chance you might go into this. You might go, okay, executor's a great match versus hit punch in, and you get smoked by an ice punch right away. That sucks. That's learning Pokemon for you. But the, the, the key from that is that you learn going forward, right? Unfortunately, you are going to take some licks. As I mentioned earlier, you are going to get smoked a little bit learning this process, but at least you have something to go off of is, is always my point, right? Sure, you know, this is not the full, we'll go back to Mock Punch. This is not the full scope of what Hitmonchan can do. And there's not going to be a lot of way to do that throughout osmosis and learning slowly and surely, but it's, it's giving you something. You're making an informed decision, which I think is important. And I'm making a game plan and thinking if I'm making a game plan, I'm going, okay, in most scenarios, my executor should be fine against Hitmonchan. I know that. So, okay. So I know this. It's great versus Hitmonchan. What about Rapidash? Well, executor's a grass dragon, so it's taking neutral damage from Rapidash. But I know the Draco Meteor is hitting really hard with specs, so let's take that one out. So Rapidash here. Uh, I'll assume it's offensive utility again, you know, the difference between the sets might matter if you want to be really, oh, you guys can't see that either. I'm being stupid. Uh, the difference between these two sets might not matter that much. Um, again, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in a bit of a rush here and you'll probably be in a, a bit of a rush too, if they throw in the timer here too, but take some time. Um, you have a full, I'll throw it on just for, uh, transparency sake. You have a full, you know, minute and a half. So I can do that. Um, Flare boats were fine, Trick Media were knocking them out. Great. What about this uh, Pharaoh Seed? And again, I know this, you might not, but I know Pharaoh Seed is four times weak to Flamethrower. Exeter's got Flamethrower. There's no way I'm losing that matchup. That's pretty safe. Uh, what about Vickavolt? Vickavolt's got a very strong bug type move. I guess I am exposing that I have more knowledge than I 
admitted to, but Bug Buzz is Okoing us. And if I scroll all the way down, I see it's got 180 speed here. Um, 180 speed, so it is faster and it's Okoing us. That's a pretty bad matchup. And actually, um, when I look at this Vikavolt on the Smogon thing here, the strategy Pokedex, I can see that it gets Volt Switch. So if they want to do a bulky pivot to start the game, try to pivot on me for free. So, okay, that's food for thought. Uh, what else do we have in this matchup to learn? Uh, we have Sinchino. Sinchino's really fast. I think it even gets U-Turn. So let's look that one up. Sinchino, uh, rarely used all out attacker. I know that Tail Slap hits like a nuke because of its skill link ability. Oh, but what if you're doing this instead of me and you don't know what skill link does? You go, skill link, what the heck does that do? Multi hit attacks always hit the maximum number of times. Okay, so that means that Sinchino's Tail Slap is hitting with a guaranteed 125 base power that's incredible and it's got how much speed to work with 90, 95 attack is, is, is a good amount of attack to work with so this is probably hitting like a nuke when it's got this choice band equipped so that's very normal that's very useful for you to know too um so in that matchup uh if we go back to the calc here i see that i can still live one so maybe you'll give it to us uh and i can actually giga drain which is weird i'm surprised it does that much damage so you can giga drain for the recovery uh and i'm Coming out of it with 50% health, so that's not bad either. Uh, and if we get Cramorant, I think Cramorant, we should be able to Elko too. It doesn't have that much Spadef. Oh, what have I done here? What the heck? I'm going to have to refresh this. This is the wildest thing I've ever seen. That's new. Uh, <laughs> you're seeing it all live here. Executor versus Cramorant. Oh, it can't render because it's the title so long. That's funny. Anyways, I can still scroll up. Uh, and Jerko Meteor is still doing it. Hurricane's a little bit scary, but we should be fine. Not to mention that's a 70% accurate move, so we should be fine. So it looks like our Executor is a really good matchup versus our opponent. And again, if I'm looking for matchups that are positive versus our opponent, this is a big one to highlight. Uh, once Vickable's dead, uh, there's nothing I can't beat 1v1. However, there's a lot of these situations where Executor has to take a hit first, and then it can return fire. So I know that. Uh, let's do Haunter now. And I'm actually going to turn this off. Um... Again, this might seem like a lot to do over the course of a match, but if you do this one by, maybe I just do Executor versus my opponent for this one match, and then I play the lead matchup. Um, and then my next time I do Haunter, and then my, my next time I do Rhydon, and Scrafty, blah, blah, blah. This all adds to why you should be using consistent teams over and over. It's exciting and a little bit less boring to have a new team every time and go, oh man, like Toxic Rooks would be crazy this, or maybe I use, I don't know, who else is in PU? Silvali Bug. Maybe I use Silvali Bug next time. It's going to be fantastic. I got to use that. Um... That's all well and good, but learning these matchups, there's a lot to learn. And this is going to help you as soon as possible. So Toxicroak, uh, I've actually used this back in the old R, rarely used here, so I know a lot about it. But uh, it's a strong fighting type, so I, I feel very strong about its matchup with this Barrow Seed here. Uh, it resists poison moves, so it should be good against Hitmonchan, unless Hitmonchan gets a Psychic move, because uh, Psychic is four times effective on the poison fighting combination. So I'll just look that up really quickly. I'll go Hitmonchan. Do, do, do. Does it get? I'll Control F, Psychic. It's agility, that's not an attack. It gets role play. That's new, but that's not an attack. No, neither is rest. Okay. So yeah, I know there's pretty much nothing that Hitmonchan can throw at us. Maybe an earthquake. So let's check that out in the calc. Scroll down for some reason. <laughs> uh, offensive. And let's say just for curiosity's sake, it's running earthquake, which I don't even know if it gets. I think it does. Earthquake is, oh, wrong matchup here too. And we'll go um, Toxic Croak, do, do, do EQ. Okay, so if it's got EQ for some reason, which would be a little bit surprising, uh, we're in some trouble. Um, however, does ours have Gunk Shot? It doesn't, it's a special one. And this is actually a special, uh, Hitmonchan has high special defense. So maybe not so much in that case. Um, so I guess if we run to a rare Earthquake Hitmonchan, that could be bad, but otherwise Toxic Croak will definitely have the advantage there. But if it's an assault best hit my chin. Oh, now we're getting really into his sticks. So you can imagine why players like BKC, BKC, I've talked to him before, and he says, I'll spend nights in the in the calc if left to my own devices. I'll spend forever here. You can see me doing this right now. I'm learning a matchup live. And this is, you know, I I'm really skipping over the time pressure of having to choose a lead for a matchup, but it really just it does just boil down to this. Maybe you play the game out. Maybe this is a better perspective. I'm, I'm, I'm learning this as I'm making the video, my recommended advice here. But maybe I play the matchup just fine. I pick my lead, blah, blah, blah. And I go back afterwards. And I go back into the replay and um, and they forfeit. So let's say that happens. Let's say your opponent forfeits. Uh, you can go to the replay. I always, always, again, recommend you go through your replays because I think it's another massive, massive way to improve at Pokemon. And you do this. So I go, okay, looking back, what was the best lead matchup here? Uh, and I can look through the rest. I can go, okay, so what about uh, Toxicroak versus uh, Ferrocede? Again, it's a fighting type. 
What about versus Rapid Dash? I don't know. That's a good question. So if Toxic Growth versus your average Rapid Dash. Defense Futility. Uh, it's got Dry Skin Ability. And if I look up Dry Skin Ability, even here, if I want to, I can do it in all kinds of places. I see that it takes extra damage from fire type moves. Okay, that's kind of dangerous. So Rapid Dash matchup might be a little bit rough there. Um, Player Blitz does not enough to Oko our Toxic Croak, but Toxic Croak could probably hit back pretty hard. Okay, that's good for that too. So all this is to say is that taking any time to learn matchups is valuable because that's being stored away somewhere and you will learn and you will improve in the future. Um, even if you just take the time in these lead matchups to just go, okay, just on a basic type wide level, like, okay, rock type is strong here. Rock type is bad here, bad here. Uh, it's good here because it's a bug type. Um, now again, you would learn after the fact that Vikavolt does get energy ball, but still just as a starting round, um, it's good versus normal. Normal, uh, is, is, uh, rock resist normal. Uh, and then it's kind of a tie versus Cramorant because the Cramorant takes lots of damage from rock type moves, but the water type moves do lots of damage back. So Rhydon's okay. Just a basic type wide level. I can go, okay. Haunter is kind of mediocre here. It's not great here because the normal type isn't resisted by ghost type. I can go to, uh, Vikavolt. Again, there's no real special type of relationship there. Same here, same here, same here. So maybe Haunter's average is a type lead. Um, and then if I go to Gallade, Gallade is, uh, loses to a flying type move. It's super effective versus this normal type. It's super effective versus the steel type. Um, the bug type is super effective against my Gallade psychic typing. So that's important to note. Uh, against the fire type, there's no real special relationship. And I have a psychic type move against Hitmonchan, plus we resist the fighting type moves with our psychic typing. So, doing anything. Again, I, I, I looked past one of my previous videos where I mentioned you gotta you gotta look for weight cons through matchups. And I looked at that and I went, well, okay, if someone doesn't know what matchups are, then it's probably no help to them. But here's the process. You just seen it just live. I, that's this is how I learn matchups. This has ended up being me being rambling on the course of this one screen for a little while, but I think that the process that I'm doing is pretty transparent. I'm just learning. I'm just, I'm just kind of digging around. I'm rooting around and here I'm going, okay, Helios, it's got dry skin. Okay. Dry skin heals you with here with the water move. Okay. So Helios is a good matchup versus water types, things like that. Or if I go into the calc and I go, okay, it has a toxic rogue max up versus a Helios here and Helios, uh, can Oko it with a thunderbolt, but Oh, you get hit with the drain punch right back. You gotta be careful about that. What's the speed tier. It's got 348 versus this 295, stuff like that. Um, so it's ended up being a little bit more rambling than I thought, but I hope it just communicates a basic idea of how you learn matchups whatsoever. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions though, feel free to let me know. The process of me having to figure out what a newcomer to the game would want to know, and I have to kind of like go back and remember what it was like for me to learn the game it can be a little bit tricky. So if you do have any questions, I always appreciate that because that can end up being a huge video topic for me in the future. But uh, thanks for all that. But uh, otherwise, it's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll catch you later. See you next time.